113 Questions About Evolution with John Perry. Evolutionary question number five. What is a creationist? I suppose that in the most general sense of the word creationist, you know, a, a creationist is anyone that believes in some sort of a creator, a creator of the universe, or at least a creator of life within the universe. So that would be pretty much all Christians, Muslims, Jews, uh, Hindus, even groups of people today that believe that aliens somehow engineered humans or seeded life on planet Earth. I guess they would also be termed creationists as well. And by the way, there's a, a growing group of people that believe that without any evidence. So that's the definition of a creationist, I guess, if you want to be really broad about it. It would include all those types of people. But typically today, when someone says that they are a creationist, what they mean is that they reject aspects of the science of evolution, usually major aspects of the science of evolution, for religious purposes. They feel like the discoveries that are being made in biology do not jive with their interpretation of scripture or with their spiritual beliefs in one way or another. So that is a creationist today. That's what we typically mean when we talk about creationists. People that reject aspects of the science of evolution for religious purposes. Now, not all Christians are creationists by that definition. I mean, of course, all Christians believe in a creator, but there's a huge and growing proportion of Christians that ha actually have no problem with the science of evolution. They accept it just fine. They study it even. They do research in it. They teach it. It's not a problem for them. Probably most notably is the Catholic Church. The, the Pope has come out saying that, you know, evolution is okay. There's this growing number of religious folks that are finding the science of evolution to be okay. So that's good. That's great. Now, within the world of creationism, the creationist movement, there's actually lots of different branches. There's been a lot of different, uh, you know, divisions within the movement. Creationism mainly got its start within Christianity. And if you take a look at Christianity, you will see that there are lots of different types of Christianity. And actually, there are lots of different types of creationism as well. There's really three, like, big groups, and they, they think fairly differently about things. There are young earth creationists. These are people that believe that the earth is literally only somewhere between six to 10,000 years old and that the earth was created in six days. There are a lot of evangelical Christians that accept this type of creationism. The young earth creationist movement is also growing within Islam right now. Again, there are lots of Muslims that are not creationists. I mean, of course, they all believe in a creator, but they don't have a, an issue with the theory of evolution. The second group would be old earth creationists. And these people believe that the earth is actually old. They accept the discoveries that we've been making in geology. The earth is indeed millions of years old. And then last but not least, we have the intelligent design movement. And the intelligent design movement is, is really interesting because it actually started off not really as its own unique movement, but as a way to hide creationism. So what happened is that here in the United States, we have what's called a separation between church and state. And state-funded schools, the state-funded education system, is not supposed to indoctrinate children with any type of religious ideas. So we're not supposed to push Christianity on our students in a public school, for example. And because of that, when people were trying to teach creationism, which is clearly a religious doctrine, they were getting in trouble at school, these teachers were. And so the creationists got together and they came up with a kind of a rebranding for creationism. They called it intelligent design, and they kind of distanced Christianity from it. They tried to, at least. So if you look at all of the intelligent design literature, you won't see any mention of six days of creation. You won't see any mention of uh, the God of the Old Testament. They talk about an intelligent designer, and they're very vague as to what that designer is and exactly how that designer goes about, you know, tinkering and designing living things. You know, they, they even suggest that it might, the designer might be an alien, and so on. And the intelligent design movement has since kind of taken on a life of its own, and sometimes the intelligent design people end up butting heads with the creationists, the young earth creationists. It's, it's really interesting that, that, that we have this, uh, you know, this, this emergence of a new type of creationism that really just got its start because of a legal issue. It's fascinating. But so that's, that's kind of just a basic overview of what creationism is. 
Uh, I'm going to do some videos specifically on Young Earth Creationism, and I'll do some videos specifically on intelligent design. There's a bunch of really interesting concepts in intelligent design. There's like irreducible complexity and specified complexity and so on. And here in a couple of weeks, I'm actually going to be going to Cincinnati. I'm going to visit the uh, Young Earth Creationist Museum, and I'm going to learn like the details of what young earth creationists believe. I mean, I've already read a lot of stuff. And the coolest thing about this is that I'm going to meet Dr. Nathaniel Jensen. He is a trained, a Harvard trained biologist who is a young earth creationist. So, that, I mean, that's like ridiculously rare. I think he might be the only one, actually. Uh, he is, he got his undergrad in genetics or bioinformatics and his PhD in developmental biology, I believe. So he's a really interesting character. And I'm gonna hang out with him and learn what he believes. I'm actually reading his book right now that he put out called <laughs> Replacing Darwin, which, you know, he's got lofty goals. <laughs> and he and I are in discussions right now about doing a public debate. And I think it will be really, really neat to do that. Because he's, again, he's like, he's. I would say he's one of the smartest dudes in the creationist movement and to be able to you know go kind of head to head with him would be yeah, it'd be it'd be a lot of fun that debate will be filmed and put on the internet if it happens uh his he actually wants to do it but the answers in genesis which is the company that he works for they're they're kind of reluctant for some reason or they seem to be my conversation with him two weeks from now i'm not gonna film because i i just don't want him to be I don't want the conversation to be like on camera and weird. I want to just hang out with him, chat with him. He seems like a really cool guy, really nice guy. Uh, I just want to get to know him and what he believes and let him get to know who I am and, you know, kind of my my history. So look forward to that debate in the future. When I get back from my trip, I'll have a lot more to talk about as far as creationism goes. To summarize what we've learned here today, a creationist is a person that rejects the science of evolution, or at least you know, major aspects of the science of evolution for religious purposes. Next question.